Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Breaking news in the kingdom of God. The final global move of the Spirit of God on the earth to ripen the church for the rapture has been birthed in Ghana. This happened on the 4th of August 2019. Stay tuned on the Good Life Devotion as Dr. Bender shares more details on this move of the Spirit. Wow, praise the Lord and a very big hallelujah. We are always excited bringing you divine information from the room of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What you receive on your favorite Gula devotion is by all standard, biblically authoritative and authenticated by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That is why you realize that you have testimonies just watching. There is a witness in your own spirit that what you are receiving is of the Spirit. It is because it is really of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So uh, we are still in the season of the breaking news in the kingdom of God. What's the breaking news in the kingdom of God? That God's final global move of the Spirit that the scripture said will happen be just before the rapture has been birthed in Ghana. This happened on the 4th of August 2019. This is the news that we have been breaking down to you from level to level. We first started showing you that you shouldn't just swallow everything raw like that. You need to prove what we are saying through scriptural evidence and uh, prophetic evidence. I taught a lot on scriptural evidence and along the lines of the move and then also started sharing with you about our prophetic evidence. Uh, in our just past episode, I shared with you on um, the prophetic evidence as concerning what the Lord spoke to us directly. And as here, I mean myself and my brethren in the New Creatures Fellowship in Ghana. We are still on the prophetic evidence of this move, but we're on the second part. We're on the part two. And I'm going to shift to what God said to other sons and daughters of God, not in the New Creatures Fellowship, and sometimes not even in Ghana. So that you realize that, you will see that this thing, it can only be the Spirit of God. No person can uh, arrange things like this. And that is how the Bible was written. Bible was written by 40 different authors that some of, many of them never knew each other. They never lived on the same part of the earth. You know, but it was the same Holy Spirit speaking. And so there is coherence in what they are saying. And you are going to see that in today's episode. If you are ready, we can share in a word of prayer. Daddy, we love you so much. We bless you. There are no, I mean, times that have been on the earth that, I mean, have been so amazing like these times. We thank you. Thank you for the ministry of your word in our lives and the preparation of the church for the rapture in Jesus name. Amen. Glory. Shout glory. Hallelujah. So the prophetic evidence of this final move, part two. Big evidence of this final move, part two. Again, our main scripture is John chapter 16 verse 13. It says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Hallelujah. So, like I said, what is in this verse that we've been trying to eat over these days is the fact that um, as part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, um, he will show us things to come. 
So it is scriptural for the Holy Spirit to take someone and show him what God is doing. And the moment you find that something is scriptural, you have the authority. You don't need a government to affirm it. You don't need a family member to affirm it. You don't need even a church organization to affirm it. All you need is God has affirmed it. One thing that we need to understand is that even twins who were born, they were not born at the same time. For twins who are born, one came about a minute or two or three. In other words, two people are not born from the same womb at the same time. Again, not even twins have the same DNA, genetic makeup. What does it tell you? No matter the family in which you were born, there is still an individual factor. No matter the country in which you are, there is still an individual factor. No matter the church in which you are, there is still an individual factor. That is why on the judgment day, the Bible says, we shall each appear. So, I love my wife so much, but I, will not, I cannot appear for her. You may love your pastor so much, I love you so much, but I cannot appear for you. Of course, as groups of people, there are also going to be rewards as uh, denominations, aspects of God and all that, but there is still an individual aspect. That is why no matter how much you love your son, you cannot be born again for your son. What does it mean? When you hear things like this, don't allow any group or groups of people and their belief systems to stop you from believing what the Spirit has told you that it is true. So, much as we are listening and trying to see what other people are saying and all that, you need to know that you'll be held responsible for your own belief. So you listen and take decisions based on what the Spirit has spoken to you. When Jesus took the Apostle Paul, he was traveling with a group of people. They heard a sound. Only Paul heard the details of what God was saying. If Paul said, oh, but my chief Pharisee didn't hear that. Oh, my, the, the Gamaliel, who is my teacher, didn't hear that. If Paul said that, he would have missed what God chose him for. All right, somebody did that. Let's go straight into what we have for you today on the prophetic evidence of this move, the second part. Now, when we started receiving these uh, insights into the revelation that God gave us after those 20 days of studying the Bible and 26 hours of pray, intense prayer, we started looking back because we always wanted to be sure that what is going on is scriptural, number one, and then it's, it, it follows the general pattern of what God is doing on the earth. Then we were amazed to discover that what, we has, what the Lord is showing us, he has shown that to many other people some time ago. I'm going to take the first group of people. I'm going to look at the minister of God, Reverend William Simon, what the Spirit of God spoke through him, and then Pastor Benny Hinn what the Spirit of God spoke through them. Now, uh, we are not by this approving or disapproving any minister, but what we are saying is that God can use anybody to say anything. It doesn't mean that we are saying that whatever William Seymour said or did, we are stamping it. Or whatever Pastor Ben Hinn said or did, we are stamping it. But we are definite about these statements they made because they are... Uh, uh, aligning with the revelations that the Spirit of God is showing us in line with the scriptures. Are you following that? All right. So, who is William Seymour? If you know church history, you understand that Reverend William Seymour um, is the father of the Pentecostal move. He, many of you might have heard of the Azusa Street Revival, which took place around the 1900s. Now, if you don't even believe in William Seymour, you can't neglect the effect of the Pentecostal move out of with the charismatic move now. Now, even in the culture, we have the charismatic move. So what God used William Seymour to start has been accepted by the origin of the, the church. So that tells you that William Seymour should be a minister of God. Are you getting that? Now, in 1910, William Seymour gave a hundred-year prophecy. We are amazed to find this in searching things in retrospect. He said that in hundred years, there would be an outpouring of God's spirit in 100 years. And he was speaking in 1910. And his Shekinah glory, that will be greater and far more reaching than what was experienced at Azusa. Then he said, in 100 years from now, 
there will come a revival. And you know when they say revival, up on the spirit, and all that, they're talking about moves. There will come a revival that will make this one look pale in comparison. Can you imagine that? So look at what the Pentecostal move has done since 1905 till today. This prophecy came through William Seymour, through whom God birthed that Pentecostal move, and said that there's going to be another move. And that one, he says, when you compare to this one, to look at like this one never existed. Why? Because what you will see was not a wave within a move. It was a major move. So like I told you, according to Hosea 6.3, the Holy Ghost is going to come in two mighty moves within which there are waves. So in the first move, which was the uh, 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 former rain move, we had the Reformation. We had the Pentecostal move. We had the charismatic move. These were waves within the former rain work of the Spirit. But what William Simon was seeing was so big compared to Pentecostal move because he was talking about another major move that will have several ripples within it. Are you following this? Right. So that's what William Seymour said. Then in 1910, Pastor Ben Heen of World Healing Center, and we know many of you know Pastor Ben Heen, um, an American minister of God who has been all around the world, and we know that he's born of God and is of God. Of course, like I said, we know that what he said here affirms what the Lord has said to another minister of God. And we agree to this because it aligns with what the Lord is showing us and confirmed, confirmed in scripture. In 2010, the Spirit of God spoke through Pastor Ben-Hin and said, he says, you are talking about a people in hiding just like Elijah was hiding. What can you glean from that? That means that what was going to happen was going to happen through a people that are not known. So it means that what was, what was going to happen, it wasn't going to be through a popular church, it wasn't going to be through a big denomination, it was going to be through some people that you wonder, where from these ones to? Since when have they been in existence? He said, you are talking about a people that are hiding like Elijah. Then he said, the Lord said to me in 89, yeah, 89, he said, when Ora Roberts and Billy Graham go home, that will be the key. It will be a sign of the beginning of the greatest revival on the earth. Now listen to this. God spoke to him in 1989, but he aired it on, I mean, in 2010. Now listen to this. When he was talking in 2010, he was talking about adoring what the Lord told him. Why did he say it in 2010? Because William Simon prophesied that in 100 years from now. Now listen to something. God told Abraham that he was going to, Abraham, uh, was going to Egypt for 400 years. But in terms of timing, they actually came out of Egypt around 430 years. It didn't mean that God didn't start working on their coming out 30 years before. There are certain things that God started doing in the spirit that many will not even be aware that God has started. But by the time it will come into public domain, it may be like 30 years, 50 years or so around the time God spoke. So you may not see it maybe exactly on dates, but exactly on those dates, God starts working with people and you may not know. For instance, there are people in America that may not have even heard about the Buddha devotion yet. And then, so to them, when the moon starts moving there, they'll say, maybe it might start moving there in 10 years' time if Christ doesn't come. And then they say, something has started, but it has started long ago. Are you following this? So God spoke to Pastor Ben in 1989, and he spoke it out in 2010. He said that, the Lord said, when Ora Roberts and Billy Graham, these are mighty ministers of God in the America, when they go home, that will be the key. It will be a sign of the beginning of the greatest revival on the earth. Which greatest revival will someone spoke about? Then look at this. At the time he was speaking, he says, Ora is home. Sorry, he said, Ora is gone home. Billy is about to go home. When he does, I am telling the whole church, Get ready. So what the Lord told Ben Hain is that there is going to be the greatest move on the earth. In other words, the previous move has not been like that. And he said, I'm giving you two signs. There are two of my servants in the United States. Remember Ben Hain is also in the United States. So God uses the circumstances around you to show you what he wants to show you. Mark Ora Roberts and Mark Billy Graham. I'm going to, they are going to transcend into eternity. When they do, then that's going to be the mark, the beginning of the greatest thing. And the time Ben, uh, ben was saying this, Robert had already gone, 
Billy Graham hadn't gone yet. And then he's telling the whole body of Christ that, listen, when Billy Graham goes, the church will get ready. Did you know that Billy Graham went to be with the Lord in 2018? Then in the early part of 2019, which is April, God started moving us into this move. Who could have arranged this? I don't think, um, I mean, I don't know, but Pastor Ben, him, I don't know whether he ever met William Seymour physically. I don't think they knew each other. And yet their words by the Spirit, by the same Spirit, confirm each other. I never knew William Seymour. I, I've read about him in God General. And I don't think that he knows me. I know him on TV. And I don't think he knows me. And yet what he said is what the Spirit confirms to us. This is how the Bible was written. Could we have sat down? Did we force William Seymour to prophesy? Did we force Pastor Ben Him to prophesy? And did they force us to prophesy? Or to say what the Lord is saying? This is the doing of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. So, with what the Lord told these people, this is a prophetic evidence. Now, let me give you another one, and then I can come back to give you a final one after break. Another one is what the Lord spoke to one minister of God. She's called Sister Woodward Ether. If you have read God's generals, you will know, know her. She was so mighty also in the Pentecostal move, also around the early 1910s. So in 1913, she also gave a prophecy. And she was not where William Seymour was. So William Seymour gave his prophecy, 100-year prophecy, in 1910. And she gave a prophecy in 1913. And look at what she said. She said in hand, it says, we are, not, we are not yet up to the fullness of the former reign. So she got it clearer. She knew that she was in the former reign, but the former reign was not yet ended. In other words, the former reign is not just one happening or one experience. It's a series of activities or moves of the spirit. You get it? So it says, the former reign hasn't ended yet. Then she said, and when the latter reign comes, it will far more exceed anything we have seen. Look at everything everybody is saying. William Seymour said that it will be so great that this one will look pale. But he said that it will be the greatest revival. Uh, well, Etta is saying that it will far more exceed anything anybody has seen. Wonderful brother or sister watching me now. These are not arranged. I don't know Woodward Etta. She doesn't know me. Now, if you care to know, and she also said in 100 years, what happened? In 2013, which is 100 years, I woke up one morning, going into my prayer room, and then I saw a minister of God in Ghana ministering on TV. That's around 4 or 5 a.m. And then suddenly this burden came on me, and I started praying with tears. I didn't understand, so I moved into the prayer room, and with tears and cry, loud cries, I prayed for several hours until the burden lifted. I didn't understand. The next day, I went to pray again. The same thing happened, but this time I wasn't crying. Then when the burden lifted now, the Lord spoke clearly in the prayer room and said, he says, I'm beginning something new in this country. So he was starting something new with the nation Ghana. And he says, and I'm starting with you. So that new thing that is supposed to happen, uh, that uh, Mary Woodward Etta said, that it's going to happen 100 years. It happened because the woman God spoke, it happened in 2013. And I never knew of any of these prophecies. All I did is, I came to tell our brethren that God said he's doing something new in Ghana. And he's beginning with us. So if you take any of our brethren, they'll tell you all these prophecies that I've told them. And we never knew it had anything to do with something like this that we are sharing with you. Who could have arranged all this? Right. So you can put together what Sister Woodward Etta said and what the Lord revealed to me in 2013. And you know that. God is at work. You can put together what God told William Seymour and ben -Him and see that God is at work. These are people that have lived, I mean, in, in, physically in Africa. ben -Him, William Seymour and Co. were in the U.S., but were in different states. And they, they are in different generations of uh, human life on the earth. And yet, because it is the same spirit, they are all pointing to a move is coming. It is the greatest move. A move is coming. It's the greatest move. It's going to be in 100 years' time. And then in 100 years time, things speak out to explain it. If we all this, you still die. You may say, but William Seymour is not in the Bible. Ben Hinn is not in the Bible. I don't believe in them. The thing is that the Bible has been ended. You can't add anything or subtract anything from the Bible. But God is still teaching you from the Bible. God is still working. 
and he still uses people. What did he say in Ephesians 4? He gave some apostles. Are those apostles' names in the Bible? He gave, he, he's the, the head of your ministry, is his name in the Bible? So does it mean that he's not teaching you the Bible? You get, do you believe God chose him? Yeah. So who is he teaching? Who, who, uh, who is giving the authority to teach? Is it not Jesus who gave him as a gift? Is his name in the Bible? The Bible has been closed as a skeleton for us, but it is the basis for which everything happens. You need to also know that God uses people today and have the liberty to accept what the Lord is doing through other people, or else you may miss God's will. But I pray for you that that will not happen. I'm going to come back after this short break and round up with another example of prophetic evidence of this final move that God spoke to another minister of God. Hallelujah. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit, a divine interaction that causes the droplets of divine satisfaction and refreshment. Ah, heavy drops that quench the thirst of a soul, leading to gushes, yes, gushes of living water. And before you know, you are flowing like a flood, being the expression of the fullness of God. This is Refreshing Times with the Beautiful Bindance. Refreshing Times with the Beautiful Bindance. Come your way this and every Sunday at exactly 4 p.m. prompt at the Good Life Center 2 near Collegono Beach, Accra. Join the service live on Facebook on David Bindan Live page or on YouTube on the Dr. David Bindan channel. Refreshing times with the beautiful Bindans, helping you walk with the Holy Spirit for life. Praise the Lord. And now read one that maybe many of you are in Ghana can identify with. And you know, God is so sweet. Just after the Lord spoke to us in um, April, I went for the waiting, and then the move was birthed in August. So in August 2019, through the father of the charismatic move in Ghana, that we can say Archbishop Williams. So after the Lord spoke to us in April, we went for the waiting, came back, and the move was birthed in August. Then, in October, the Lord sent a special minister of God to Ghana. Remember, he has said he's choosing Ghana for something new. He sent a special minister of God to Ghana through the father of the uh, charismatic move, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan William, that's, uh, of the Action Chapel International. And this is what the Lord spoke to that minister of God. Remember, that minister doesn't know me. He doesn't know New Creatures Fellowship. But this is what the Spirit said to him. He said that God has sent me to Ghana to release a word for the next historical era in the world. What does it mean? That means that the world is stepping into a historical era. Oh, glory to God. It it's a new move in the world, not Ghana, in the world. But God sent him to Ghana to declare it. Then he said, he said, Ghana is the first fruit nation for the revelation of the new era. Was it there in 2013 when God said, I'm starting something new? He wasn't there. He doesn't even know me. I don't know him. But he says, God chose Ghana. Then he said, God's eye is upon you. Talking to Ghana. Then he said, we are entering into a new Holy Spirit movement. Was it there when the move was birthed in August? No. Did anybody tell him? No. Could a man have calculated all these things? Absolutely not. So is it sometimes the Holy Spirit gives a lot of evidence so that if you hear all this and still you don't believe, then you can't blame God. Then he said, an explosive kingdom move of God. Look at the things he said. One, he said it is Ghana. Two, he said it's a new move. He said it's the move of the spirit. And then uh, uh, four, he said it's an explosive move. Talking about how great the move was going to be. Then he said, the charismatic move has ended. <laughs> he was speaking at the place of charismatic move in Ghana. Then he said the charismatic move has ended. Didn't we say the same thing? That the charismatic move is the rounding up of the first reign? Then he said, Ghana is the prototype of what God is doing, advancing into the future. 
Oh, Ghana is blessed. If you are a Ghanaian, there's no other time to be excited like this and get arranged and oriented for God. That's why the body of Christ in Ghana needs to hear what I'm, what I'm saying and maximize it. This is our time to become global partners in the whole world because we have been chosen. Then he said, divine lines of God's timing and voice have intersected over Ghana. Oh, glory to God. Did you hear that? Divine timing, God's timing and voice. What are the timings? Look at the prophecies that were prophesied 100 years ago and then we, we continued in 100 years in Ghana and then the voice, what they spoke is being repeated in Ghana. He just said this as he was ministering in the Action uh, Chapel. You, you can get that video on YouTube and watch it yourself. So, these are our prophetic evidence of this move. Wonderful viewer, we don't need to persuade you. The Holy Spirit himself is in you if you're born again. And you will know, after putting everything together, if you go to our YouTube channel and listen to this, you can know for yourself whether this is of the Spirit. If you've been watching me on today's episode, you need to be born again. It doesn't take much to be born again. Just believe that Jesus is the means by which you can receive the life of God and be born again and declare him as Lord. If you do that, you'll be born again. Surely I'm going to see you on our next episode. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.